Hank Aaron is one of the greatest baseball players in history, famously breaking Babe Ruth's home run record. Mickey Mantle called him the best ball player of his era, and he's remembered as an icon on and off the field. This is the untold truth of Hammer and Hank Aaron. Henry Louis Aaron was born February 5, 1934, to Estrella and Herbert Aaron in Mobile, Alabama. Like many black children of the era, young Henry idolized Brooklyn Dodgers star Jackie Robinson, who broke baseball's color barrier when Aaron was 13 years old. Aaron told his father he would make the pros before Robinson retired. At 18 years old, Aaron dropped out of high school after being signed by the Indianapolis Clowns of the Negro American League. According to the Negro League's Baseball Museum, Aaron spent one season with the Clowns, making $200 a month and batting a league-best 467 average. Next, his contract was sold to the Braves, at that time still located in Boston, but soon to move to Milwaukee for $10,000. The Braves assigned Aaron to the Eau Claire Bears. In 1953, he became one of the first players to integrate the South Atlantic League. Playing in the South, Aaron faced a barrage of racist taunts from fans and players. In the first integrated game in Atlanta, Aaron hit a home run in the first inning, and fans attempted to hit Aaron with rocks, leading to the game being stopped. Still, Aaron won the Most Valuable Player Award in his only year in the minors. By 1954, Hammer and Hank would be a major leaguer. Before making it to the majors in 1954, according to author Ralph Wiley, Aaron hit a ball so hard that Boston Red Sox star outfielder Ted Williams ran out to the opposing clubhouse to see who had hit the ball. He didn't suspect that the culprit would be an unassuming player who had yet to make the majors. Despite his immense talent, Aaron's bat was the only thing that talked. Throughout his career, Aaron did not play in a major media market like Mickey Mantle, and his playing style wasn't known for being flashy like Willie Mays. Aaron himself said, I didn't do things with a flair by no stretch of the imagination. His quiet demeanor often led fans to overlook him throughout his career. Despite being consistently at or near the top of the home run list year after year, it wasn't until 1970 that people began to notice how close he was to the all-time record. The few times he did appear on the biggest stages, Aaron proved he had no equal. Yankees superstar Mickey Mantle looked at Hank Aaron as the greatest player of his generation. Mantle certainly isn't a minority in this assessment either, as Aaron's contemporaries were left in awe from watching him. They had plenty of compliments for him as they were interviewed following Aaron's selection for baseball's all-century team. Aaron, known for his steady consistency throughout his 23-year career, left some painful memories for pitchers who had to face him. Jack Mann of Newsday remembered a nickname Dodgers Hall of Fame pitchers Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale gave to Aaron, Bad Henry. Koufax had this to say, For me, he was the toughest out. Everybody else, I had a plan. For Henry, I just never figured out what I was going to do. Pitchers employed different strategies to deal with Bad Henry. The brushback pitch, or a pitch thrown intentionally inside to intimidate a batter, was often used against Aaron. Fellow Hall of Fame pitcher Gaylord Perry recalled about the strategy, When you knocked Aaron down, you weren't doing yourself any good, because he got tougher. When one thinks of Hank Aaron, the first thing that comes to mind is breaking the all-time home run record held by Babe Ruth. Ruth's career record of 714 was so great that it was believed to be unbreakable. However, as the 1970s began, and Aaron's consistent performance continued, many fans and outsiders in the sport made sure Aaron knew how they felt about a black man overtaking Babe Ruth. Aaron received thousands of pieces of hate mail, threatening him and his family if he kept on pace to break the home run record. On the 20th anniversary of breaking the record, Aaron spoke candidly about the experience to the New York Times. He recalled, my kids had to live like they were in prison because of kidnap threats, and I had to live like a pig in a slaughter camp. I was getting threatening letters every single day. All of these things have put a bad taste in my mouth, and it won't go away. They carved a piece of my heart away." Terrence Moore, a longtime sports journalist based in Atlanta, had this to say about the hate Aaron faced during his pursuit of the all-time home run record. It's a lot worse than we even know. Trust me. Hank doesn't like to talk about it. If people truly knew the story of what he endured and for him to go through it with dignity and still be productive, it's just astounding. 
After a long winter concluded, the 1974 season was set to begin with Aaron setting at 713 career home runs, one to tie, two to win. However, during this time, the commissioner of the MLB, Bowie Kuhn, and Aaron began to butt heads. Atlanta opened the season with a three-game road trip in Cincinnati, and Aaron and the Braves wanted the record to be broken at home in Atlanta. However, Commissioner Kuhn ordered Aaron to play in at least two of the road games. Aaron began the season by tying the record with a home run on April 4th, but he was fuming behind the scenes. Aaron had reportedly asked that there be a moment of silence in honor of the six-year anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. His request was denied, with time constraints being blamed. Aaron actually sat the bench in Game 2, and then went homerless in the third game in Cincy, which meant he returned to Atlanta only one home run away from the record. In front of a celebrity-packed crowd, and with millions watching on television, Aaron broke Babe's record. Missing from the celebration was Commissioner Kuhn, the commissioner citing scheduling conflicts for his absence. This, coupled with what he felt was unfair treatment of black players, led Aaron to resent Bowie Kuhn. In 1980, Aaron reportedly refused an award from his old rival in celebration of his record-breaking home run, criticizing the MLB's treatment of retired black players. In 1961, Yankee slugger Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's single-season home run record by hitting 61 in a season. During the season, according to Newsday, the pressure led Maris to suffer from anxiety and hair loss. So imagine years instead of months chasing Ruth. In an interview looking back on the home run chase, Aaron called 1972 and 73 as two of the toughest years he had as a baseball player. Once I reached something like 650, I was way up in the 600. I thought that I had an outside chance, you know, if everything would fall in place. Then April 8, 1974 came. The attendance that night was 53,775 people, the highest in the park's history. Against the Los Angeles Dodgers, Aaron stepped to the plate in the fourth inning. His teammate, Dusty Baker, who was batting after Aaron, recalled Aaron saying, I'm tired of this. I'm going to get it over with. Being the veteran, savvy player he was, the sequence went as predicted, and Aaron smacked the ball into the Atlanta Braves bullpen for number 715. Aaron waiting, the outfield deep and straight away. Fastball is a high drive into deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence. It is gone. As he was rounding second base and the crowd was exploding in a frenzy, two white fans ran onto the field. Aaron's wife, Billy, remembered being terrified for a moment at the sight of the two men following her husband. However, the fans simply patted Aaron on the back and congratulated him. Hank Aaron's home run record is commonly regarded as being his legacy in baseball, only surpassed 33 years later by Barry Bonds, with great controversy, as Bonds admitted to using performance-enhancing drugs during his pursuit of the record. It's kind of hard for me to digest and just come to realize that Barrett cheated. But some of his other records remain untouched by other players. Baseball record books still show Hank holding the record for career runs batted in at 2,297, as well as the record for total bases at 6,856. Aside from that, Aaron was an elite defensive player. After spending his pre-professional career as an infielder, Aaron found a permanent spot in the outfield, which worked out as Aaron's infield abilities were not at a professional level. After a preseason game prior to being promoted, Dodgers outfielder Duke Snyder recalled about the minor leaguer Aaron. I don't think much of him as a second baseman, but the way he swings a bat, they're going to find a place to play him. Aaron played 2,174 of his over 3,000 games as a right fielder, according to Baseball Almanac and won three Gold Glove awards, given to the best defensive player at a specific position. Unlike many other power hitters, Aaron's strikeouts remain very low, averaging only 68 strikeouts per season. By comparison, Barry Bonds and Babe Ruth averaged 83 and 86 per season. The late Tom Seaver said it best when describing Hammer and Hank. The thing that people should know about Henry is how good an all-around player he was. That's one of the most overlooked aspects of his career. Beyond the home run chase, Hank Aaron was on the front lines of civil rights during and after his career, 
Aaron was one of the baseball players in the early 1960s who pushed to desegregate spring training facilities in Florida. In 1966, the Milwaukee Braves became the first professional league to move to the Southeast, becoming the Atlanta Braves, right in the heart of the civil rights movement. Aaron entered the league only two years before Jackie Robinson's retirement. After idolizing Robinson as a teen, Aaron told Dan Patrick in an interview that he would talk to Robinson during and after games, learning from his hero. Still, the home run chase and the racism he endured during that time remains the greatest testament to Aaron's strength. After the 1973 season ended, with Aaron one home run shy of tying the record, he told reporters he feared he would not live to see the next season. Louis Grizzard, the sports editor of the Atlanta Journal, had privately written an obituary for Aaron on the all-too-real chance he would be killed before breaking Ruth's record. Aaron kept and occasionally read many racist letters he received, saying of them, They remind me not to be surprised or hurt. They remind me what people are really like. For a player and a man as great as Hank Aaron, it would be an injustice if his retirement in 1976 was the end of his time in the spotlight. With very little debate, Aaron was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility in 1982. Upon retirement, Aaron was hired by the Atlanta Braves as the Director of Player Development. He was the first African American to hold a senior level management position in baseball. Aaron remained connected with the Braves organization throughout the rest of his life. According to ESPN, in 1999, the MLB announced that the best hitter in both the American and National League would receive the Hank Aaron Award. At the 2015 All-Star Game, Aaron, along with catcher Johnny Bench, outfielder Willie Mays, and pitcher Sandy Koufax, the man who referred to Aaron as Bad Henry, were honored as the four greatest living ballplayers. In 2002, President George W. Bush awarded Aaron with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest honor one can give a civilian. In 2015, the National Portrait Gallery honored Aaron by making him one of their first five individuals selected for their gala. After years of being left out of honors and celebrations because of his quiet posture and the color of his skin, the twilight of Henry Aaron's life saw him properly celebrated for his accomplishment. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite sports legends are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.